let's talk about some of the properties of Riemann tensor. Um, we already know that delta A alpha is R alpha beta mu nu d lambda ds. Uh, this probably is not the right way. Actually, it's the right way should be like that. This is how we write it. Okay, which I didn't really write in the last lesson, but this is how we write it. Okay, so the cha um, this is the change in um, the vector a. Actually, there should be another term a beta when it's tra it's transported in a, on in a parallelogram around length uh, around uh, element d l lambda followed by element d s or vice versa, and then the, f the two vectors actually differ by this amount. Uh, first of all, the very foremost property is that you can always use metric to raise and lower indices. So if you multiply this by or uh, if you put like this, it's um, beta sigma will give you r alpha sigma minimum. Okay. So let's say um, you don't want to use the contravariant component of the element ds. You want to use the covariant element. Then in that case, you can write this as r alpha sigma mu nu um, a actually r alpha beta or actually alpha new beta mu a beta d s new and d lambda mu okay uh, so here we see we are using the con the co the covariant uh, components of the L line of the element d s instead of using the contravariant element which we were using before so um, you see it can be used to raise the lower indices you can use the other way you can do the other way around also if you have alpha beta mu nu you can contract it with alpha sigma and that gives you r r mu nu beta sigma all right now the task of let's write it explicitly in terms of the Christoffel symbols is written as alpha beta mu comma nu minus alpha beta mu comma nu plus alpha sigma mu comma actually no comma well comma means partial with respect to that thing uh, beta nu minus alpha sigma nu and sigma beta mu. Okay, um, well we know that in local coordinates, a local frame actually, using normal coordinates, You can always make the Christopher symbols vanish. Um, so in, in local frame, we know that it's flat. Riemann surface is flat, and we get simply this. Okay, and. Um, you can also write this. I'm not going to derive it, but you can also um, write the whole thing in terms of um, the metric. So, in terms of metric, because you can always write this uh, sigma thing in terms of metric. So, you can always write everything in terms of metric. And if you do that, you can actually see that um, R alpha beta mu nu equals half g alpha nu comma beta mu 
minus g alpha mu comma beta nu plus g beta mu comma alpha nu minus g beta nu comma alpha mu this is a mu okay comma alpha mu all right now uh, we know that um, that g mu nu equals g nu mu it's a symmetric symmetric tensor so you will get r alpha beta mu nu equals minus r beta alpha mu nu equals minus r alpha beta nu mu equals r mu nu alpha beta and using the same kind of logic you can actually also show that r alpha beta mu nu plus r alpha nu beta mu plus r alpha mu nu beta is zero okay um, so basically it's um, r alpha beta mu nu is anti-symmetric on the final pair and the second pair of indices and it's symmetric on the exchange of the two pairs um, well you see all of these this particular equation um, this one and this one these are nothing but tensors these are our tensors so um, these are uh, tensors so if you, even if you change the coordinate system the equation is not going to change so um, well components will change but uh, equation itself will not change because it's a tensorial equation um, moreover as you can see um, these two equations if you use well first of all you can put so for four dimensional space three dimensional sp uh, space and one dimension time you can put four 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 which means r will actually have 256 components but using these two components you can use these two equations or symmetry you will see that actually are just 20 independent components um, an important thing is that if r alpha beta mu nu equals or gamma equals zero let's make this new beta mu nu equals zero this implies flat space because you see it depends on the second partial of the metric so second partial of the metric vanishes um, I mean the first partial of the metric um, vanishes at the um, uh, that's a wrong statement Let, let's just re, re, uh, reiterate the same thing if these are zero which means the curvature is zero or which means this delta a is zero which means if you use the two path and they the two the two vectors end up I mean the transported vectors end up such that they are the same which means delta a is zero which means there is no curvature so this is actually, um, if this is zero, then it's flat space. Okay, um, we will have other things, but these are the things that come to my mind right now. If they come up, I'll explain them according to the problem we are dealing with. So we'll, we are heading towards current.